In this video, we'll talk about processing of the class 1 MHC molecule in bit more details. In earlier video, we have talked about this process as an overview. Now we are going to delve into details of class 1 MHC and class 2 MHC presenting uh, in much more uh, elaborate fashion. So any nucleated cell would display its self antigen or endogenous peptides on class 1 MHC molecule. Whereas antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cell would display uh, uh, exogenous antigen, let's say, which is coming from a bacteria or a pathogen on class 2 MHC molecule. Our focus is class 1 MHC molecule presentation in this video. So here is a normal nucleated cell which would have MHC1 and MHC2 cluster in its genome. In this case, the MHC1 cluster would be expressive and it would give rise to the MHC class 1 molecule components and it would be translated onto the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the protein would enter the endoplasmic reticulum. At this point, the MHC class 1 molecule is basically in an unfolded state. So what you're looking at right now is the class 1 MHC molecule alpha chain. It would eventually be folded by the help of chaperones like calnexin. So there are also other uh, molecules like, like ERP57. This would form the disulfide bonds in these class 1 MHC molecules. So they take part in the initial folding process of the class 1 MHC molecule. After the alpha chain is folded, the beta 2 microglobulin would attach to this complex. This would allow dissociation of calnexin and replacement of calnexin with calreticulin. And additional to calreticulin, there would be ERP57, there could be tafesin and tap transporter. So all of these forms a complex known as peptide loading complex. Now where does the peptide come from? The peptide is actually generated by immunoproteasome in the cytoplasm. So big peptide fragments are broken down into small fragments which enter the endoplasmic reticulum with the help of the TAP transporter. Notice that TAP transporter is in near vicinity of the class 1 MHC molecule and it all formed a peptide loading complex. With the help of TAPSIN and ERP57, the uh, peptide loading groove of MHC class 1 would eventually be loaded with the self peptide. What happens when it is loaded with the self peptide? Eventually it would leave the ER with anterograde transport mechanism and it would reach the Golgi. From the Golgi it would travel through the trans Golgi network and eventually follow that uh, anterograde uh, basically a uh, vesicular transport pathway to be displayed onto the cell surface. This is how class 1 MHC molecule is displayed on the surface of any nucleated cell. Now what is the significance of displaying self peptides on the class 1 MHC molecule? What is the benefit of it? Well there are many benefit. Sometimes what happens is in so these kind of uh, MHC bound peptide give the cell self uh, give, give the cell as a self recognition capability so it's kind of like a flag that everything is okay now what happens is in many cases like when there are virus infected cells some of the viral peptides are also represented to the cd8 positive t cell by the class 1 mhc molecule so in this case the class 1 mhc and the tcr interaction triggers the release of cytotoxic material from the CD8 positive T cell, which lead to the apoptosis of the virus infected cell. Also, in case of uh, tumor cells, there are many antigens and proteins which are very specific to that tumor cell. And these unique proteins are also displayed on the class 1 MHC molecule that can be recognized by a CD8 positive T cell and which can secrete or mount an immune response against this tumor cell. Now we understand why class 1 MHC molecule is really important in context of tumor immunity or immunity against virus. Now let me tell, tell you that there are cell categories known as natural killer cell which scans each of the cells for uh, any kind of uh, wrong aspect. Like the way they scan is basically with their inhibitory receptor. So they are always engaged to kill. They are cold blood killers, so they are always engaged to kill. 
if somebody is not actively protesting and preventing the killing procedure they would kill them class 1 mhc actually interacts with the inhibitory receptors and ensures the killing doesn't happen it's a signal for the nk cell to disengage but imagine a scenario where the mhc class 1 molecule is not displayed then natural killer cell would find it and kill it and that's what happens and that's beneficial let me tell you why because many of the cases what happens is many viral uh, infected cells in order to be saved from the cd8 positive t cell they down regulate the mhc so cd8 positive t cell would be confused because mhc bound peptides are really small in number so they would disengage but even though they disengage the natural killer cell would feel that absence of class 1 mhc molecule and they would engage and eliminate the viral infected cell so all of these tells us the importance of class 1 mhc molecule bound self peptide sometime viral or sometime tumor peptide so i hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe support us in super thanks see you in next video